when I tell you that God is good, stay tuned. Be good. Hey everybody, welcome back to Life of Robert's Wife. I'm Jatoa Amos. I know it's been a long time. Um, I just want you to know that, hey, I do not sit around and make videos all day. Um, I am not one of those YouTubers. So if you've been looking for that type of channel, no. Um, it's whenever I feel like the Lord has led me to say something, then I will get on here. Um, so let me get started with the testimony. On September 26th, I received a phone call. When I received the phone call, it was from... Um, Another disclaimer before I get even deeper. I did ask for permission to use the um, events that happened in this video and um, to use the name of the person in the testimony. And I was given permission. So get back to the story. So on September 26, I received a phone call. I missed the phone call because I was busy, you know, um, with school and everything. And so when I looked at it, it was one of my ex law sisters, Stephanie. And I was like, oh, Stephanie, call me. Let me see what she wants. So I'm like, hey, girl, what's going on? And she was like, hey, uh, George. She was like, I, um, I got something I want to tell you. And I was like, okay. And she said, you know, I was talking to you and so-and-so about Zeta, how y'all denounced what now. Y'all wasn't really saying too much um, at the time. And she said, I'm calling because I want to denounce. Look at God. And let me just clarify what she was saying. When people would bring up Zeta, me and the other um, person who denounced from my line, we basically let it be known that, hey, we can still be cool, but when y'all bring up Zeta Phi Beta, uh, there's nothing for me to discuss. I don't have anything to say about it. You know, um, because... And that's in the means of, you know, we got this going on. We got this. You coming. You coming to the step show. You coming. It's like, I don't know. No. You know. Um, and they know when I say no. I mean, no. Jatois always. <laughs> like, I just don't want to have any part of it. Um, but that doesn't mean I don't want to talk to them. That doesn't mean that I don't want to hear from them or about their families. It's just with that, you know, you can get kind of caught up and your flesh can rattle up. Because you be like, girl, what is on? You know, and it'll start taking you down a road that could easily um, just lead. Remember, you know that. Just just think one more time. But just do this one more time with with us. You know, that's just. And it's like, no, y'all, I can't. I don't. I don't want to have nothing to do with it. Um, so that's what I mean. It's like, no, my no means no. So when she when she said that she was excellent, but I told her I don't remember. You know, you saying too much about it. Um, excellent about it. I said, but um. I said, so what made you want to denounce? So she was talking about a whole, it was a series of events that happened in her life that told her, basically, I need to get rid of this. I need to stop. She said, like, one day, her car, it wasn't broken into or anything. And she knows she had some Zeta stuff back there. And all of a sudden, it was gone. And she has a truck, and she has a tag on the front of the truck. I mean, there's nothing and bolted in that had Zeta. And then she said one day she was driving down the hallway and when she went to park, it was gone. Like she said, there's no way that it could have flown off because it has been on there forever. Like nothing was, it's not like that she was driving through a storm, bumpy roads or anything. It, it just left. And so I asked her what she saved and she said she was. And she told me about how she used to go to church when we were in college, which I didn't know because when we were in school i never did go back home with her like on the weekends like i never did the weekend trips there were some other line sisters that did um and so you know when all three of us were on the phone the other one that denounced um we, she was like yeah i remember that i remember that so you know i was like oh, I, I never went with you so um she said yeah i used to go home and i used to go to church every weekend and so she even said that even when she was joining, there were some things that were just um, given just red flags that, that she basically, you know, just pushed it aside or didn't really pay too much attention to because, you know, she's thinking that when she joins this organization, it's going to be like a true sisterhood. And I want to tell y'all this. When they be talking about this sisterhood, 
um, there are some people that will be on the line that will be closer than others, but when you cross over, that doesn't erase cattiness among women. That doesn't erase envy. That doesn't erase insecurities and jealousy. That doesn't erase malice because all those things come from the heart. So something natural can't take that place, right? Something natural can't take it away. It has to be Jesus. It has to be surrendering to his will, to his way. Repentance, number one, and then it goes away. So not even just an organization, but anything in your life, something natural just can't take that away, right? So when you look, there have been people who, when they join, they say they want to join for the sisterhood. But see, the thing is, what you're really saying is, I want that fellowship. I want that longing. I want to belong to something. Um, I want to feel a part of something. And so that's a void, right, that you want to feel. And you're using this to do it, but you will still come out unsatisfied um, because we all fall short. You know, there may be a time where you try to call one of your sisters. She won't be there. And then you'll be hurt, especially if you already face rejection in your life. And rejection can, can turn into some other things where you're trying to overcompensate by being the one that, that that comes around like this Zeta who's everywhere all the time. Like every time there's a party, she's the first one at the door. And it talks about needs some, she's the first to jump. Benevolence is good. But again, um, you have to make sure you have balance with things where you're not overcompensating to fill a void where you should just turn to Christ to fill that void. That's all I'm saying. So back to um, Stephanie. Um, so... Then she wanted the other line sister to, um, she wanted her to get on the line as well. So we we were all three way and we were just discussing, you know, the things that we saw that were just ungodly, the, the things that were happening. Um, and it's just funny how when we were young women, teenagers, um, the way that our minds stopped, the way that we saw things, but as we began to mature, um, and especially as you grow in Christ, that you can see, oh, that was a setup from the beginning. Yeah, I never did like that. I never did. Um, I, I didn't see it that way, but now I see X, Y, and Z. Um, so I just want to encourage, I, I came on here to encourage someone because I've had people who um, wrote in the comments about their family members. So I've watched other denouncing videos where people are worried about their family members and them being in secret societies and fraternities and sororities. And you're saying, how do I get them to see? How do I get them to really truly understand that this is not of God, that this is wicked, that, that they shouldn't be in it? And all I can tell you is to pray. You cannot be the Holy Ghost in anybody's life. It is the Holy Ghost that brings conviction. Now, you may speak and God can move through your words and it will cause conviction, but it's still God, right? It's not us. And so the only thing is you have to understand some people, they do just see it as something good. They honestly do see it as God opened this door for me. They honestly see it as I'm legacy. My mom, my grandma, uh, my aunts, all of them are in a sorority. Like this is family. Like nothing bad happened to them. Like I've been blessed. I, I had all this, 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 and um, I don't see nothing wrong with it. And you know what? There may be good things um, going on in your life where you feel that you are blessed even more so after you have joined. Um, but blessings are not tangible things. It's not. You will learn that um, as you mature and you grow in Christ. But it's going to take somebody that is higher than us to really open their eyes to see um, what God needs them to see, especially in this hour. Because I really believe that we as saints of God, we have to be obedient. We have to really, um, when God says something, you have to move quickly. There is 
um, safety and obedience to God. And yes, it may take some people some time to really understand, but when God has opened your eyes, don't keep asking for signs. There's no reason to ask for signs and wonders when God has already spoken. He's shown you in your in his word. So I just wanted to, um, again, come on here and let you know that God can answer your prayers. We pledged in 2003, fall of 2003. So if anybody asks, why do people always say fall 03, 507, fall 2021, fall, fall 21 or fall something? Well, in most colleges, they have fall semesters and spring semesters. And some have fall lines, some have spring lines. So in the fall, um, from August to December, they may have a line to come out. And so it will be known as fall, whatever that year is, 2023. So spring 2000, 2024, what they would say spring 24, that would be when they um, have crossed and probated between the months of January and May in school. Um, so that's where they get the lines and then they will say the name of their chapter, um, which is on the college campus. So I just advise you all um, just to keep going to the Lord in prayer um, that he would just open the eyes of all who have been blinded. I would um, advise you to just be patient because um, you can just send a video and if they get angry, it's spiritual. It's spiritual. Because if you say, well, why you just can't do Habitat Humanity for Humanity on your own? Why you got to join a sorority to do that? If you want to feed the homeless, why you can't just do that with, by yourself or do that with the church? Why you got to join them? That doesn't make any sense. And you're going to see anger. And that's the enemy trying to cause them to be led of their emotions and not think soberly. God has always told us to think with a sober mind. Be sober minded. Um, and so it's just anger that's riling up because it's like you're trying to say something wrong and nothing is wrong. Stop saying something is wrong here. And um, it's the flesh. It's the flesh. But those of us who are led of the spirit, we don't succumb to um, the desires of the flesh. We we don't. We, we make sure that God is leading us. And that's why we continue to pray. Open our eyes. Open our eyes for us. Because, you know, people will try to use, well, you ain't perfect. You did X, Y, Z. And then you got to raise your hand. You be like, well, how... It, even though you pointed out that I did something, how is that still justifying what you're doing? Because what if I didn't do this? Are you still justified in being in that? You know, you'll see how they answer. Um, and we ain't trying to, you know, we're not trying to be petty, but people will go hard with that. Well, you did, but still, does that justify any wrong being done, period? That was wrong. I'm telling you, this is wrong. I can be held accountable for my, my sin or my wrongs, you're still trying to turn a blind eye and it's easy to turn a blind eye because Satan is not going to make it easy for them to see that it's wrong. They're going to start telling you everything that has been good about it. All of the, the fundraisers, all of what they do for this and that and that and all the money that they give in scholarships, all they do. But when you say, okay, when y'all had a club or when y'all do y'all line dances, you're being seductive. You're being lascivious. You're promoting lust. That's in the Bible. That's one of the works of the, of the flesh, named in Galatians. So how is that giving honor to Christ? You know, an ex with a sincere heart. Don't come to nobody funny. That ain't how we do stuff. We don't do we don't do that. We ain't coming to them funny. We come in sincerely and genuinely like, tell me, how is that, though? The last time you were in the club and you were um, dancing to this song, did you did you read the lyrics? All your line dances are to, did you hear see the lyrics in this song? Could you tell me how that, that gives God praise? How's that giving glory? Would you do this um, at church? And, you know, for those of you who say, um, no pastor wives or pastors are talking up talking about this. We can stop that. I'm a pastor's wife. My husband is a pastor. He never pledged. I pledged. I denounced, and I'm telling people don't do it. So it's not everybody. 
um, some kangaroo, everybody in that big lump. There are people that are speaking out. We may be small and few in between, but we're here. So um, don't ever think you're alone. Don't ever think that there are not more people that God are that God can use or he is already using to get the message out. But I tell you, you pray and you let God do the work. Because when I tell you, he will bring that thing to pass. He will cause people's eyes to be open. He will cause the scales to fall from their eyes where they have no other choice but to see his hand moving in the mix. They will have no other choice but to see when he unveils the evil, what's happening behind the scenes. It is too much information out here for people not to do research. Even when people are trying to be online now and they will say, well, I did my research. No, you didn't. You look up to so-and-so and then you want to be just like so-and-so and that's why you're doing it. When you're playing no games, y'all, we, we ain't got time for excuses. That's one thing I do not like. If I ask you a question and you're trying to beat up around the bush, what, I mean, what you mean? We're going to stop. You know exactly what I mean. You know exactly what I ask. We, we're not finna play those games. Could you please answer my question? Oh, it's, oh, it's a time waster for me. I just do not like that. So when people come and they try to do that, we, we get straight to the point. You know what I'm talking about. You know that God did not tell you this because we we so used to listening to our flesh that we say God God said and we have to really be careful with that because sometimes people say God said or God told me um to give their um their wording weight and authority but let me tell you if you cannot find it in the word of God let's stop speaking through dreams and visions and speak with the word of God. God said, I would have no other God before me. That's it. Most of these shields that they have, have other gods on there. They are false Greek gods. And it's Greek. It's Greek. You know how I many false gods that they have and that they worship? It's another way for Satan to get his hands in and through your, your lineage to cause more curses, to continue with these generational curses. And you're wondering why this happened and this happened and this happened. Because we keep the cycle going. And when we see truth come, we want to immediately knock it down because it does not appease to our flesh. But anywho, I'm not trying to be on here long, but I just want to tell you that she did denounce and um, she wrote her letter. And she um, sent her letter off immediately. When I when I told her, I said, you send a letter, you tell them, don't put my name in the Zeta book, um, in the directory. I don't want it in the directory. I don't want any, any to have anything else to do with it. And when I tell you, it was like the next day, she sent me a picture of her mailing the letter off. So uh, I'm going to share that with you. And I hope that this testimony has helped you to just hold on to faith that God's going to answer your questions um, and your prayers about how to talk to your loved ones, how to approach the subject, and um, hopefully deliverance. Because one thing about it, you cannot want it more than them. They have to have their hearts open to the truth and then be led of God to denounce on their own. You cannot write the letter for them. You cannot... Um, speak it for them they have to do it because once they um know jesus and they believe in their heart that he is the son of god and then they believe that what he's speaking to them is truth because in him is truth. there is no 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 darkness in him at all he he cannot lie because he is truth so once he speaks that truth to them and he begins to stir their heart they have to choose to accept what he's showing them and do the work on their own so just be patient. Just be patient. Because it was, how many was on the line for us? It was 19 that pledged. And it was like two that didn't play. 21. It's already three down. 18 to go. <laughs> and it was one who said she wanted to do it because she ain't involved, but she hadn't denounced yet. So we working on her, but think about that. I was the first to denounce. 
I told everybody. They didn't agree. Then another denounced. And then I got a phone call because I denounced in 2008. And then another one just denounced in 2023. God is patient. And he's long-suffering toward us all. And we're going to praise God for the other 18. Because, again, we got one. She, she right there, but she ain't all the way there yet. So we have 18 more souls on my line to continue to pray for for deliverance. And I hope that God does it. So I hope this encouraged you. I love you all. Um, if you have any questions, drop them in the chat. And I may take the time to comment when I get a chance to. All right, love you all. Bye.